My name is Meg wetmer -Fail. I serve as the Associate Director for the Center of Evangelism, Mission, and Church Growth in the Central Texas Conference. And as of July 1, we'll be working with Owen and the Center for Multiplication in the Horizon Texas Conference. So looking forward to that. And this evening, we are here to talk about our Back to School Prayer Initiative. And so I want to welcome you and thank you for being here. And um, before I offer a few words, I'd like to open us in prayer. If you would join me, please. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks for our time together this evening. I pray that the ideas that we share and the information that is passed um, will enlighten us and encourage us for the path ahead that we would, uh, all that we would do would bring honor and glory to you, that we would serve our communities and the families in our communities well in all that we do. And so with that in mind, I invite us to open our hearts and minds to the ways in which you would work through us through this initiative and look forward to sharing ideas with one another. All this I pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. So again, thank you for being here this evening. Um, this uh, back to school prayer initiative is um, something that the bishop has uh, invited us into and has, um, you know, is, is very supportive of. It falls in line with our vision that we are followers of Jesus seeking a loving, just, and free world that God imagines for all people and fits um, so well into all of the five um, missional priorities, championing children and youth, multiplying Jesus followers, pursuing and embracing diversity, maximizing care and healing, and telling our story. And so uh, we are not here uh, to tell you how to do a back to school initiative at all, but this particular initiative is focused around prayer. And so uh, we want to make sure that we give thanks for and affirm what you are already doing in your churches. You are uh, the ones who know best how to serve your communities, and we are grateful for the work that you are doing and what you continue to do. Um, this uh, initiative is the first um, initiative of the three conferences together, and so we are uh, delighted to come together under this, uh, something similar to the Blue Christmas initiative that took place uh, at the end of last year. Uh, this, we hope, will not just, um, while we're using the back to school as a, a launch pad for this, this is something that we imagine will continue for throughout the school year, and we're hoping that um, this prayer initiative will continue for many years to come, Keep, keeping prayer at the center of what we do. And so this evening, uh, there are several people who have been part of the team that I'd like to share uh, with you, just highlight. We have um, Danielle Kim, Reverend Danielle Kim, whose story really launched this. And she's going to talk a little bit about that. I know many of you have seen her video, uh, but she, she'll present in just a few minutes. We have um, Jessica Vargas. We have Owen Ross, we have uh, Joseph Bradley, we have Christine Pierce, and John McClarty, and Joy Dister Dominguez are on the call as well. And I don't know if anyone else, I don't see anyone else yet who's uh, a part of this team. Uh, we have intentionally included folks from all three conferences on this leadership team, and it has been a delight to work with everyone. So thank you for being here. And um, as we move into just a quick moment of sharing, uh, we, we are fully aware, as I said earlier, that you guys are already doing a lot of, uh, you're already doing back to school initiatives and have, have been doing those, holding those for many years. And we, we'd like to just hear from you um, what, current practices you are engaged in. You might wanna share some of those in the chat um, with us, but just what what has worked for you when it comes to back to school um, initiatives, back to school blessings, 
share with us uh, some things that you have done that have been successful. Do you want them written in the chat or orally or what? Yeah, you can do, you can, it, it, depending on how many people are talking, if you want to go list some things in the chat and others also share with us what you're doing, that would be great. I think that um, we learn from each other and there is um, a lot of power in collaboration and sharing of best practices. I'm happy to go ahead. I'm uh, Gracie Millard. I serve at Street Memorial in Flower Mound and we are literally across the street from Marcus High School. And so for the past, oh, I don't know, 10 years, so predating me, um, our um, church, but the men's ministry is the one who does most of the preparation, uh, serves teachers and faculty um, lunch on the last day before students return. And, um, that is they always really, really appreciate it. It's um, a great way for them to, for us to truly be in their, in their place, come to them and bring the lunch to them and they feel <laughs> and appreciated and loved. Um, so that's something that's worked really well for us. Yes. Thank you Good for sharing. Good evening. This is Marion Williams and I think Linda White and Pastor Nuke and some others are on from St. Luke United Methodist Church. Uh, for the last few years, we have, um, uh, before school started, we would meet with the principal or administrators and do a prayer circle around them. And um, then um, we would meet with the principals just to see what their concerns were before school started. And then for school, we would always um, go to the schools the day of school, of, it opened. And like these signs right here, I was backwards So We had signs like this. Our members would go to each school. We adopted schools in South Dallas um, and welcome the kids back. And before that, we would give away uh, over 500 backpacks with the supplies in it. And we try to welcome the kids back. And then during the year, we also do things. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, good evening. I am Leslie Anderson from the Woods United Methodist Church here in Grand Prairie. Uh, our team uh, supports Mosley Elementary. We collect backpacks, school supplies, the whole nine yard. This year, we are also collecting uh, water bottles. We've already ordered those and we will be giving those along with the uh, backpacks. Uh, we also, of course, do blessing of the backpacks for kids who want to bring their current their own backpacks to church and have them blessed and we give them name tags uh in partnering with mosley elementary we also give coats and jackets for the winter and since last year we've been partnered with isaiah's house so many uh young people who are going through the child protective uh system those that are old enough to go to school we also supply them with uh with the supplies that they may need to go back to school uh, in the form of clothing and school supplies. So we're really excited about that new program that we are doing with uh, with uh, Isaiah House here in Grand Prairie. So that's, that's what we do. We're excited. That's Thank great. You. I love the fact that it's uh, an ongoing relationship. You know, yeah. that you, it's not just the beginning of school, but you continue to connect with yes. these children and families and with the yeah. community throughout the year. Yeah. We are a small, struggling church, but this membership is revitalizing and renewing itself. Uh, and these are things that they've historically done, but there's new enthusiasm and vitality in what's going on. And the Isaiah's House is a new uh, uh part of the of the outreach uh, ministry for children and youth so that covers a whole spectrum of you know pre-k all the way through high school uh, before they age out the system yeah right yeah right. thank Great. you okay anyone else like to share thank you for the comments in the chat you have quite a bit in there
I think Heather is on. Heather, are you on? John, would you like to share what you guys are doing? Did you say John? I did. Okay. Um, well, I, I put in the chat, we, we do a, um, we take a, as soon as worship ends on a Sunday morning, the Sunday morning before the schools um, bring back students, uh, we send out groups to every, every campus in our district and uh, spend a little time in prayer there. We've uh, done this in partnership with some other churches in town. It's kind of grown to that. And um, we also let all the administrators know on each campus. And so they're uh, encouraged to invite teachers. And there are lots of occasions when we've had uh, some faculty and, and staff join us for that. Um, I didn't come up with that. I stole that from a previous church where uh, they did that on a regular basis in, in McKinney and, and we brought it to Wichita Falls. It's been a big hit. Um, and that's in addition to the regular ongoing partnership we have with one of the elementary schools in town and and some of the things that we do specifically for uh, teachers uh, there on that campus and um, and then the reading partners that we have with a lot of the students there. Um, and so that's, that's kind of how we've gotten started. And uh, so I feel like, you know, we're we're in a good spot to to build on on uh, on what could be next. Um, but but those are just a, a few things that that happen in, in Wichita Falls. Right. Thanks for sharing. As you can see from the comments and also from those uh, comments that have been posted in the chat, there's a lot going on. And and uh, we we are grateful that you are willing to share that. I know if there are other things that you would like to share after this, um, please do not hesitate to reach out and to share, because I do believe that collective wisdom can only benefit us. Um, at this point, we'd like to move on and uh, have a bit of conversation about what our objective is for this initiative and our what our why is. And so we're gonna turn it over to Owen and let him take it uh, in this part of the presentation. Well, thanks and I'm glad to see everyone uh, here tonight. And I, um, if you got a chance at the North Texas Conference to see John McClarty's presentation on this, it was, it was classic John. He was, he, he says, you know, who here is excited there's yet another conference initiative? Who here is already doing something back to school? And now the conference wants to add to this. And, and but then he began to share, like, but this has potential of, of really changing lives. And, and, and I firmly believe that, um, you know, a lot of what we do helps kids through the school year, um, doing school supplies and, and such. But this really does have the opportunity possibility of really impacting um, lifetimes has any of you had somebody that in your life that you knew was praying for you by name uh, daily or frequently and if you would like to put their name in the chat I can share that person in my life was was Jim Turley and some of you may may know Jim but he would regularly pray for me and then out of the blue from time to time he would just send me a text saying you know I'm praying for you today and it just I mean, it always touched me. And then, you know, a couple of times a year, he'd be in town and he'd take me to lunch and then we'd have prayer there. And, um, and as a parent, I've taken my, my kids to dozens and dozens of, of churches with my, with my job in church development in North Texas. And there's three churches that send my kids birthday cards that are handwritten that says that they're praying for my child. And that, and that, that touches me every year to know that someone is praying for my child, even though it's, you know, uh, you know, a once a year. And so we were wondering, how do we leverage our back to school activities? How do we leverage um, uh, our connections with, with, with families and children in our church to uh, develop these prayer partnerships? What will it be like for parents, for students, educators to get an occasional card, text, or email, let them know that somebody is is praying for them. We've heard, I hope you've heard by now, the testimony of Danielle about Hesu Park and how she's transformed her life. And then if you've ever prayed for somebody regularly, you know how that impacts your own life and your connection with that person that you're praying with. And so this initiative, it's, it's quite simple. How can we leverage 
um, our relationships with students and educators, disciple our congregants and potentially multiply disciples through praying for students and educators by name and praying for people, praying for students and educators that we're not related to. One of Bishop Sign's priorities is to develop a culture of prayer. And it hits our five strategic priorities of multiplying Jesus followers, champion children and youth, pursuing and embracing diversity, maximizing care and healing, and telling our story. And so this initiative, and that's why we have Joy Disher Dominguez that's on here, Christine Pierce and Joseph Bradley, as who are directors of various centers, because we're seeing this being across uh, it, it touches it touches all areas. Again, it's simple yet powerful. And so I want to encourage you to think about this in levels. First, think about the children who are active in your congregation, the ones that are there on Sunday mornings. Um, how might you connect them with people in the congregation that would be willing to pray for them by name? And you can imagine how that relationship would develop if they knew Miss Anna over there is praying for you. And every time Miss Anna saw, uh, you know, little George coming in and that they're praying for, for them. Um, I would also say, think, think about the children that are connected with your church that may not be active in your church. The children in your preschool or your daycare, having VBS this summer, project transformation, um, families that come through your church's social services. Uh, I've been to churches that didn't have children in there, but I know that there's grandparents in there and perhaps grandparents can get other grandparents and get permission from their kids to say, hey, can I get some people in my church praying for our, our grandkids and can they be in contact with you? And then children in the community, whether that's through our distribution activities, your back to school blessings, um, school relationships, school counselors, um, one thing we did at Christ Foundry is we, when I was pastor there, we did big advertisement outside the back to school blessing Sunday. And we always had visitors of parents wanting their kids to be prayed for. But we didn't do this part, which is the follow up to build those relationships. And so basically finding an opportunity to get before parents uh, to say, uh, would you like one of our congregants to pray for your student or an educator, would you like one of our congregants to pray for you? You know, yes or no. Uh, and then is it okay for them to be in relationship, uh, be in contact with you? you know, yes or no. And we're going to have people says, yeah, pray for my kid by name, but I don't want to hear from you. Or I'm not giving anybody my email or my, or my, or my phone number, but yeah, pray for my child. But then there's going to be those that say yes. And so Joseph and Christine are going to share with you a little bit about how to help to um, recruit those persons, how to connect with them, and resources that uh, you can expect from the Horizon Texas Conference to help uh, equip your church in doing this work. So, Christine, Joseph? Yeah, thanks, Owen. Um, <clears throat> so, when we envision sort of how this works, uh, you know, practically for our churches, is we think that it starts with something we're calling the Prayer Initiative Coordinator. And so this is some person, this is a person that we envision being sort of the point person um, in, this could be, maybe it's somebody on this call, maybe it's you, maybe it's a staff member, maybe it's a lay person. Um, I personally think that our church is at its best when, when lay persons are involved. And so um, maybe it's a team of people, but whatever it is, and, uh, we imagine there being a coordinator or coordinators. Um, and these persons are going to be sort of the, the first level um, and so we imagine this person helping move the congregation along. We imagine this person being somebody who is helping uh, remind uh, prayer partners of maybe specific dates in the calendar where they might be uh, reminded to pray during, you know, testing times or during, you know, uh, special events that are happening around homecoming or different things like that, right? This is kind of a point person um, who's sort of organizing uh, the prayer partners in your church. Um, this is somebody who we imagine also is going to be interacting with our team, uh, sort of as we progress through this initiative, uh, somebody that we will have the pleasure of sort of walking alongside in whatever ways can be helpful. 
Um, and uh, whether it's through trainings or whether it's through just simply, you know, hearing of the stories, uh, hopefully the stories of connections that are being made and, and lives that are being changed uh, through, through this. Um, this is really just sort of a high level kind of understanding of what this looks like. And on July 23rd, uh, which is a little over a month from now, we're gonna have a training for these coordinators um, where we're gonna talk about some uh, sharing practices, uh, ministries around the school, back to school. You can sort of see it there on the slide. Um, we're going to talk about recruiting prayer partners. Um, Christine's going to talk about that uh, again, high level here in just a second. Um, but this hopefully will give you some time uh, to figure out who are the who's that person in your congregation that may have a heart for this ministry. Um, again, you may already have somebody in your mind uh, of man that person. Uh, would be the perfect person, but hopefully, uh, you know, you'll have between now and July 23rd to figure out who that's going to be, and then we'll have some more uh, training uh, for the coordinators um, at that time. And so I'm going to throw it over to Christine, and she's going to talk a little bit more about sort of the next level, which is uh, the prayer partners and how we're going to recruit those and so on and so forth. Thank you, Joseph. So when it comes to recruiting your prayer partners, I recommend starting at least two Sundays before the back to school event that you're planning. Um, but I would actually recommend already planting seeds now because those seeds will be what brings fruit. Two weeks is kind of a short turnaround for people to commit to it, something for a year. Um, so maybe you want to make a big push and a narrative around the opportunity that prayer partnerships are happening, or you want to have healthy conversations that foster the direction you are looking for. The best practice is always to have conversations in recruitment, in addition to all the any of the all hands on deck blasts that you might include, uh, including emails, bulletin inserts, and et cetera. But those conversations are going to be critical, which also mirrors kind of what's happening with the prayer partners. Your best prayer partner is the person who is present, and those that are present will be some of the best prayer partners because that student will be able to see their human more often should they return. But that doesn't mean that you have to have perfect attendance to be a good prayer partner. Casting the vision to the church includes um, looking at the back to school Sunday plan that you have and starting at least two weeks before you intend to start talking about it and making plans for your bulletin inserts. Uh, we will have a sample of what information you could be collecting to include contact information, but a response card is always a great choice to recruit for anything around that back to school, including not just prayer partners, but maybe you're recruiting for something else like you're going to have a back to school bash or you need prayer walkers to walk those schools and pray for those students. The next thing you want to do is you want to look at your website or your social media presence and make sure you've got a banner or something posting about it. Um, I recommend tagging people who are already invest invested in your ministry. If you're going to use social media, might as well use it to the best of your benefit. Uh, the other thing and the most important one is probably the direct invites. Those are going to be the most meaningful ones in in most of the ministries of our churches, we already do this in different ways. So for example, with mission trip, I had a list of adults and what I had witnessed or been told were their great skills, including kids, adults who were kind, empathetic, and prayerful. And while we didn't do this as the exact same project, we did do something similar for each mission trip, pairing students with a praying adult who wrote letters also to encourage the students on the trip. So this may be something you are already doing on a smaller scale, and we're just asking you to build it back up a little bit. All said, the best invite is a direct one and in the form of communication they respond to. Some members you have will want a phone call. Others may want the conversation in the pew right after church service when you've got to get somewhere else, but it's important for that. And then others may actually just want a brief text message between the seven to eight time frame when they've already retired and put kids to bed. I would like you to please plan to attend that July 23rd training for our praying coordinators. The training of the prayer coordinators is going to be what makes this work. So any of your prayer coordinators and also your prayer partners will need to be ministry safe background checked. If you need help accomplishing that, please just reach out. There will need to be a basic level of confidentiality. There will be need, need to be boundaries that need to be set for both parties involved. And then in the July 23rd meeting, they will address or we will address some more frequently asked questions. But our goal is to find people willing and able to do this ministry. There should be training in addition for your prayer partners, hopefully by the second week of September. And then you want to set after that second week of September, you want to set a commissioning liturgy for these prayer partners, hopefully no later than September 22nd. After training, their first point of interaction can begin. 
always following the guidelines. And if any questions or situations arise that you want to connect with your praying coordinator coordinators for assistance. And if your praying coordinators don't have the answer, please reach out to everybody here. Finally, one of the things that we do have to offer you is um, a back to school toolbox. It includes liturgies from, from some of our churches use, as well as you, liturgies from the UMC Discipleship Ministries and UMC Young People Ministries. And if you have other ones that you want to share with us, please let us know. Please email. Um, it also includes bigger kickoff ideas. And then two things that I particularly love, which are prayer walls and prayer walks and how to do those best. Um, it is also, sorry, it also shares ways to bless teachers and staff with prayer and service and college students, because we should be thinking of them too, or post high school students. And these resources will be available through an online drive. I think your next person you get to hear from is Danielle, who, if you have not already heard, she is phenomenal. Well, well, thank you, Christine. I hope I, I get to live up to that uh, expectation here. So, uh, friends, uh, this is your roadmap in uh, for for us to engage in this prayer initiative. Uh, very simple four steps in which we can engage and uh, move forward um, in terms of serving our community uh, communities with prayers. Um, and so, um. I would like to go to the next um, slide. Uh, these are the next steps for us, um, for us to engage in that four-step roadmap. Uh, number one is to recruit the um, your prayer partner coordinators or uh, prayer coordinators. Um, we just need one, maybe two, if you're a big uh, congregation. And two and three are more like, uh, what is it, back burner thinking? You're like simmering uh, in the back uh, of your brain. Is that how you say it? Somebody help me here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and so uh, just think about who could be your prayer, par prayer partners. Who are those people like uh, Christine was mentioning um, present and the call to pray for our the children and also educators, um, school community, um, education community, members um, in your um, neighborhood and also think about how you can engage families, educators, administrators um, to sign up for, uh, sign up to be, how you're going to um, be able to meet with them. Um, and so if you would go to the next slide, please. So um, if anything, out of all these things, um, really the most important next step for us is to recruit uh, your prayer coordinators um, in your uh, congregation. And we have that registration link already open and ready for us. Um, and so you can go ahead and take out your phone and scan this link uh, or QR code or and or, um, thank you, Jessica, um, um, Click the, the link uh, that Christine has, sorry, Christine, um, has shared in the chat and um, you can start sharing this link with your um, prayer uh, coordinator if you already have had a conversation or if you know that you're going to be you, uh, it's going to be you or um, etc. And so um, I just want to end by uh, saying that it is incredibly important for us to um, identify uh, the Hayesook Parks um, in our uh, congregation, they are the ones who are interacting with the families and students and children. And so we um, encourage you to um, pray for them, support them, and, and start thinking about um, who who, the, who those might be um, in your congregation that you are prophetically called to call that out, call that calling out. And so um, with that, uh, I, I just want to also pause here I know we're going to have a Q&A uh, session in a minute, but um, some of you might be, would you mind, uh, Jessica, go back to uh, slide 12? You might be looking at this roadmap and go, all right, Danielle, this is too much. We're not in that season in the life of our church right now. This is great. Maybe next year, two, three years later, but not this year. Um, we hear you. And um, here are the ways that we encourage you to sort of think about, um, um, consider um, adding to what's already good in your um, you know, plan. So if that roadmap is not working, um, try one of these five options or more. I know that Christine had Christine and Joseph had put together really good options of um, thinking about 
putting that like you know prayer component to your reach out outreach to your community um and so for example you can host a prayer walk like um john uh, was talking about um having hosting a prayer wall uh, for your uh, students and teachers and adults are working with them in your community offer to anoint your uh, teacher's hands um, in your community uh, a quick word of prayer and blessings having hosting a, a breakfast lunch uh, meeting for uh, teachers and offering to pray for them or delivering backpacks with um someone said with a uh, like unique names, like you're getting names of teachers and um, those who are serving children and you're actually like giving them tags. I think somebody shared earlier, that's such a great, um, I think it was Terry, right, uh, McGill. Um, and so I took notes. That was a great idea. So those things are um, one of the options for, for you to engage in this uh, prayer initiative, even though um, you're not um, in that uh, stage where uh, you can think about having full-blown prayer initiative. So with that, I think I will pass it back to uh, Meg. Am I right, Meg? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. So we'd like to just take a few moments to um, invite questions uh, that you may have as a, as a result of this. I will tell you that this session has been uh, recorded and the slides will also be made available to you afterwards. Um, so let's let's just open the floor to any um, questions you may have. If you prefer uh, typing them in the chat, that's, that's good too. No questions. Meg, if I may, can I ask questions? A question sure. to to us. So uh, I'm just curious to know um, when you're thinking, uh, looking at the roadmap or um, the way that the prayer initiative, um, you know, where we're going. I, I'm just curious to know, like, what your first impression is, um, how you are thinking. Um, you know, this is helpful to the ministry that you are already doing in your uh, mission field. Um, and so I, I would I would be curious to know your first impression of, of what we just presented. And um, yeah. Can I can I jump in for just a second? I think all of this is really awesome. And and I love the idea of training prayer partners. Um to really have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the kids. I guess my, my first question, and I think this is probably something that will be answered later on, was how to safely make those connections with kids, families, in the schools, in the communities, without kind of being, being weird about it. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know that schools are just gonna release you know, names of folks. Um, and for a church maybe that doesn't have very many kids in their in their own congregation, but really wants to reach out in the community, how to make those connections um, so that so that you can effectively have this partnership with somebody and they can know that you're praying. I'll go ahead and take that one. Terry, I'm so glad that you asked that. One of the things that we want to make sure that we're doing is we are waiting for their approach. So they may show up for back to school Sunday and submit a card saying that they would like to have their name included for a prayer partnership. And that will be part of the toolbox that we provide. There will be one of those in there for a parent that's saying, Hey, I would love my child to have a prayer partner for this year. Um, I know that I would love for my children to have prayer partners for every single year of their school life. Um, and so that's part of it is, is extending it and inviting them in, but the parent and the child have to make that commitment on their end. And then we respond. Um, and that is perhaps the best way to go about doing it. Does that answer your question fully? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And I think Terry, everyone's context is a little bit different and it's up to you to determine what the best way 
to approach this is because you know you know your community better than anyone else. Thank you all. Lisa had a question in the chat. We are a tiny congregation in a town of under 300. I'm considering doing this with other two with the other two churches and their pastors are interested. Do you have any suggestions on adapting this for a more than one church program? I was in the process of responding to that coming from a small town um, in Trenton, uh, Wayne Walters at Market Street United Methodist Church. And we did a prayer over Trenton event for two um, we did it for three years. I was there for four. We did it for three. And we prayed over all of Trenton. We had folks from the Baptist Church, the Presbyterian Church, um, the, the Church of Christ. They participated, but they participated in their Sunday morning event. But I was happy for the participation. So um, we did a full on prayer over Trenton uh, event. And we prayed at um, the community center, the police station the all all three school campuses um I'm trying to think where else oh the city hall uh and the fire station and then each of our individual churches um and it was really successful um and we had different teams at each facility that uh prayed took a picture sent it to us and then we did a um kind of a, a facebook post after that just said you know here are all the places we prayed at today uh, the first year it was just our church the second year it was the Church of Christ, the Presbyterian Church, the Baptist Church, um, our church, obviously, First Trenton, um, there, and there were a couple others that came uh, just to be a part of us. And so we had pictures of all these folks at the different schools, the, the fire department, the police station, the city hall, the community center, um, all just praying over Trenton. And it was a really uh, neat event that we were able to pull off and do. And it was a very tiny congregation, but we still did it. So. It can be it can be done. If the, I hope that answers your question. It helps. We're really interested in trying to do the prayer partners. We have an, the three churches have a great relationship. Interestingly enough, it's Trent, Texas instead of Trenton, Texas. Oh, that's uh, great. But uh, the Church of Christ pastor and I have done a lot of things. The First Baptist Church pastor is working with us. We did the first baccalaureate in thirty years. Year before last. Mm -hmm. And the second one this past year. But we're wanting to do the prayer partners thing as much as anything, because so many of the kids there in Trent are low income and pretty rough spots. So, you know, we're, we're talking about the cards and how do you do it and how do you assign you know, safe sanctuary? I know how to do for a Methodist congregation, but how do I get the Church of Christ congregation, safe sanctuary trained. Um, this is what I'm trying to figure out is how do I take this really cool idea that I want to try and bring in two other congregations over which I have absolutely no say in control. We, we just celebrated uh, Vacation Bible School with the Presbyterian Church in town um, here in Maybank. And what we did was we had ours do our safe, uh, we're, we're safe sanctuary, which is the equivalent of, um, I don't, I don't remember what you just said, because uh, we've been in safe sanctuary for so long, but our, our, our training was safe sanctuary. And the same thing that um, they had to produce, we had to turn in our certificates to them. So I went through and printed all 39 of my volunteers certificates and they went through and printed all five of their volunteer certificates and we had them all in a folder. <laughs> so, so we knew exactly who everybody was um, from both sides. Uh, the Presbyterian Church has a system for it as well. Um, and so for them, it was a little bit easier, but for us, it was, you know, still, uh, but, but we made sure that everybody was there. We had some volunteers from a uh, foster program that we use and a mom came with us and um, I had the, the forever families that they're part of, I had her run a background check for them and then we ran ministry safe for her. So everybody was keeping up with, um, with their stuff. So yeah, hope that helped. Hope that's helpful. Uh, this is Marion from, again, from St. Luke to, this is a kind of a downtime for the schools. 
uh, they're getting ready, you know, for next year. So I don't know about, I know in Dallas, the principals go on vacation in a few weeks, but this may be a good time to contact the schools because the schools are not so up and going. Some of the students are not there, the whole faculty is not there and may be a good time uh, to kind of make a contact so the principals can, you know, be able to listen and not have so much to worry about. Um, yeah, I, I have a question. Can can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is there a certain terminology that should or should not be used, knowing that parents or families might be concerned about there being prayer in schools? I, I wouldn't be. Uh too concerned about that because most of the praying is going to be done in people's houses i mean or wherever they are you know accustomed to praying um okay. if you're going through your local school to make those part those then that question you would ask the school um and my experience in connecting with schools in different parts different schools approach prayer in school in various in very different ways and so I think from our side, we're just getting out there. Would you like prayer for your student? Uh, yes or no. Uh, can we be in contact with you uh, to let you know from time to time that we are praying? What would be that preferred contact, email or text, and then and then getting that. Um, okay, that makes but, sense. Yeah, but if, if you're going through a school administrator, school counselor, or anything like that, then yeah, you definitely want to ask them and that, that's what we we were saying about leveraging um what you're already doing um to to get those um contacts and that's when you ask like you want to pray for you can create a google form you can create a, a sign up registration and you can have those people and they'll give you and then that's how, what like owen was saying um i want you to pray by name but i don't want you to contact me but i want you to pray by 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 name for my kid or for me as a teacher, and here's my contact information. So you can use what the contacts that you're that you're getting through VBS, uh, that you're the contacts that the information when you're having those back to school um, events, and and then um, you can invite them there. Say, hey, do you wanna do you want us to be praying for you? So that's like moving it like one step further. Like you're doing the tax, then in that blessing of the backpacks, invite them to write their information, and then. Hey, this is an, an, a new initiative we're having this year. Do you want to be part of it? So it's not necessarily us going to the school and asking them inside the school, you know, can you give me your name to pray for you, for you? But we're inviting them to be to come and be at our events and say, hey, you know, now that you're here, can I pray for you by name? Do you want to be part of this? I'm sorry, Jay. Okay. No, that's great. Oh, I was just I was gonna. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. I was just going to add, um, everyone's context is going to look just very different. Um, and even if you're just planting those seeds with the school, um, it may be, you know, watering those relationships over the years that they'll grow and develop. Um, but even just starting with maybe even sending cards out, having um, all of the church staff or all of uh, those who come to worship sign cards or have your children in your um, church, make cards uh, for the teachers, for the administrators, um, by just starting small, starting to build those relationships. Um, you'll be surprised how the next year um, there may be a, a willingness to partner on a deeper level. Okay. Thank you. So I wanted to piggyback off of the lady before that I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. Um, we partner with different schools within our school district, and when we do their um, stock teachers lounge, we put a QR code up that goes straight to our prayer portal of how can we pray for you. And we did that in the teachers lounge because anything like that that just makes them feel more comfortable with how we can pray for not only the teachers, but we we've had some of the teachers say, "Hey, I've got this student, uh, a male student or a female student. They don't name names because of obvious reasons, but." hey, they could really need some prayer. And it's something that also our ISD does a mentorship program. And about 80% of our staff 
our mentors within the school district. So we can also go in and be a face, be there for these students and for administrators as much as we can. So awesome. it's that little thing, like awesome. you said, the QR code, the Google form, like, hey, we do that, hold on. <laughs> so. Well, I wanna thank all of you. Erin, I, I, I do say that we, we did have conversation of separation of church and state, and we felt like that if we are mindful of how we are approaching this, and that it if it is rooted in the relationships from the church that emanate out, and there is conversation with the school districts, we certainly don't want to, um, you know, be insensitive, right? So, so um, yeah. So again, every every person's context is a little bit different. So we're here to to resource you as you need. Um, I wanna thank each and every one of you for being here. This is great conversation. And, and you guys have just, the way you are sharing information and ideas, I really pray that this will continue um, as we move forward in this initiative. Um, you guys are brilliant and creative and doing a great job. And so thank you for all of that. Um, wanna just quick shout out to the team for the slideshow and the agenda and everything. Uh, great job, um, Jessica and Danielle, and thank you so much. And Joseph and Christine, we have a great team. Nothing, nothing happens in a vacuum here. We are collaborating and working together. And so very great, uh, grateful for uh, the opportunity to do this and to live more fully into our vision and our uh, missional priorities. So um, you have the QR code for the next steps and the link to the coordinator training. We look forward to that. If you have any questions whatsoever, um, please let us know. Um, uh, uh, Jessica is going to be the will be the primary contact for that. So make sure that that uh, if you have a particular question that you did not uh, uh, we didn't capture in the chat. Uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to Jessica and and ask those questions. And if and if she doesn't have the answer, then then we have a whole team of people that um, uh, can work together. We'll work together to get that answer. We look forward to working together through this initiative, and and most importantly, um, uh, look forward to the ways in which God and the Holy Spirit are going to work through each and every one of you and your teams and um, and the lives that will be touched and transformed. So thank you all for your ministries, for your love of your community and the way you serve Christ. Um, I don't have anything else. Um, is there, I didn't ask you ahead of time and I know this is really rude, Joy, but would you mind closing us in prayer? I should have asked you ahead of time, my apologies. I'd be honored. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. Great and gracious God, we are so grateful for all those who are spending this time uh, this evening and all of those who will go back and watch this video that we're not able to make it this evening. Um, God, what a, a marvelous opportunity to, to gather, to be your witness of clear healing in this church, to really care for um, our children, our administrators. And God, we're just grateful and honored that we can be a, a small part of that so that all may know that they're loved, that they're cared about, that they're seen. God, thank you uh, for putting this on uh, Danielle's heart to, to share uh, with all of us to really spearhead these efforts um, to, to reach out and to make a difference in this world. God, as we go for forth place. We pray for your blessings to be upon us. We pray for um, the teachers, the educators uh, that are having a bit of respite this summer. God, we pray for your peace and your renewal. And God, we pray for all of our students, for their safety, uh, for their, their health, and so that they may come back energized for the school year ahead. And God, may we partner with them to truly um, be an encouragement through your Holy Spirit and prayer and all, um, all of the goodness that we can pour into lives of those um, who are, are growing and uh, developing and, um, and part of your church, part of your body of Christ. God, we pray all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Joy. And thank you again, 
to each and every one of you. Um, blessings on the rest of your evening. Uh, we finished ahead of time. And so again, please do not be shy about asking any questions and reaching out to us um, if there's any way we can assist you in the meantime. So thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>